Yo, 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 and we're live. And we are live. We are live. Here Welcome we back are. to Film Bros University, everybody. Ah, oh, episode nine. We're on episode nine now. Who, who would have thought? Here yeah, we bro, are. That shit is crazy. We had that ass on episode nine. Um, but yeah. So back to your regularly scheduled programming. We have Benzie on. Benzion I have returned. returned. Benzie has returned to the pro- the dramatic return to the podcast. The dram- we get dramatic. Return. <laughs> um. Yeah, but what do we have this week? So we got a bunch of sneak peeks uh, for the fall and 2024 in terms of like TV and like movies that are going to come out. HBO had a big uh, release of like a press, or like their own, like I guess, like what, like comic or press panel or whatever. The they all have that now. Like they, Disney has that. Like everyone they has had, that. They had some uh, event and they changed their name from HBO Max to Max. But why? Which is and like they went from purple to blue. They went from well, why? Yeah, would they, why look, they go from the purple? <laughs> why, why would they do that? Well, yeah, nah. I love the purple. I miss the purple now. It doesn't suit it. I don't. But now I'm confused because it used to be HBO. Now was like where I used to stream uh, their content when like Euphoria was coming. The first season of Euphoria was coming right, out. Right. I was using HBO now. And then it became HBO Max. And HBO Max, in my opinion, is probably my favorite streaming service out yeah. of the streaming services. Like, they have some of the best content, but, like, I remember within, like, the first few months, they had Harry Potter, which was, like, a big reason I was also happy about it, because, like, every single movie was on there, and then they took it off <laughs> after three months. Hey, but now they're going to have the, the HBO, like, the Harry Potter oh, show. They're going to have we'll a show. We'll get into that later. 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 I don't want to talk about that later. But, um, but yeah. They completely changed that. They pulled the Mark Zuckerberg with their company name. I did from Facebook to Meta, stupid. from HBO Max to Max. Nah, it's stupid. It's stupid. Um, but they did have a lot of interesting stuff that came out. Yes, they're doing a Harry Potter reboot. They're trying to span it over the next ten years. I do not want to hear my future kid coming up to me when I ask him, "Hey, have you seen Harry Potter?" He's like, "Which one, Dad?" <laughs> Those these are the questions that, that no, they're gonna be asking. No, you know? I can't. Nah, bro. There's no way. There's no way. I'm gonna feel. No I'm gonna feel like so bad for like those like it those next actors to live too, up to the roles. Whatever, like whatever flaws the original like eight movies have, they have a couple. They're too. They're too like, uh, what's it called? Iconic. Yeah. They're too iconic for for like a whole new series, to take that over you know i mean i guess you know it's because in our perspective it was fairly recent because we haven't lived as long as like some other people that's the true people that have worked on it but yeah it's been 11 years since deathly hallows part two and now they're planning on doing a, a remake i think it's gonna be a few years till they release it though yeah i, I love how i know we'll they get into it later no, no, we'll they, about it they said they said that they were essentially making this show so that they would have more time and they would have basically they would be able to make it more accurate to the books and i was always a big guy where when i read the books i was like oh my goodness i read the books after i watched the movies well if they're doing that then we won't have to worry about them changing characters and doing what what like hollywood does nowadays right right know? I mean, they still they still might like it all. It all depends. They still might change some things to fill out some episodes, but their uh, their essential idea is that we're going to be more accurate to the books because we're going to have more time to develop instead of being rushed like the movies had to be, where we cut out a lot of the stuff from the books. Yeah. And so I'm wishing them luck, but I think they're going to have a lot of like the comparison syndrome where I'm going to feel bad for like the young actors that have to like live up to like the roles of like you know um, Emma Watson, Rupert Grant, Daniel Radcliffe, all these guys like. These kid actors, they always get, like, so bullied. They always get, like, so all this stuff, and it messes with their heads getting the fame, like, that early. So I'm wishing them all luck. Uh, you know, they're going to have to be doing all this stuff. I hope it's good. It's probably – it could probably be rough because, you know, they're going to have the TV budget instead of the movie budget. But then again, we did have Game of Thrones and all these other shows where they get big budgets. But we'll have to see. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I mean, the only thing we can do is wait and see. I'm not looking forward to it. I didn't feel like it was necessary. I feel like – we need to move on from right. remakes. I feel like that more than ever now. It was a it was a problem back in like 2015, 2016. They were remaking Poltergeist. They were remaking um, what's the I forgot the other one. But there was a bunch of remakes in the mid 2010s, and now like now more than ever they're bringing back everything. They're remaking Roadhouse. Yeah. And I remember seeing there was like behind the scenes footage where Jay Gyllenhaal was shooting after the I believe it was the 
it was a UFC fight, I think, and then they filmed inside the cage with a live audience, which uh, is interesting. But like, what does cool. it what does it have to do with Roadhouse? <laughs> if you've seen Roadhouse, I haven't seen or, the like, original. You know about it, yeah, it. it's 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 weird. It's it's. We'll see, I guess. Yeah, but um, the one thing that did look good to me, but it's another it's another situation where I sort of have to wait and see because I don't know how to feel about it. Was the Penguin show? Mm. The Penguin show that they revealed. They revealed the teaser. Um, Colin Farrell, he he looks like he's doing his thing. You know, he's, eating, I, he's he looks amazing. He's eating it up. He's eating up that role. It's it's his. It was. He's the best on screen penguin that I've seen. Of course, there's Danny DeVito. And I love Danny DeVito, but this is like, in terms of like, when I watch like, when I think of the Arkham games and all these different stuff, it's like a very accurate, like tonally, like the Penguin that I enjoy from the comics, right. comics you know? I, I always had like a soft spot for like the Penguin from the TV show Gotham. Like, I, I, I forgot that actor's name, but he always did great. But it's just he looks completely different from the Penguin in the comics. You know, so that's always been a thing where it's like it's not entirely comic accurate, but I've always had a soft spot because he starts as like you know this like young young guy in the mob and he rises his way to the top and he becomes like the kingpin of Gotham and that's sort of the route that they're going with in the show. So I'm interested in seeing how they differentiate from the show Gotham and this new Penguin show. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, no, it's it's exciting because I do think that it looks like the cinematography and all that stuff they're sort of taking from like the Batman and they're sort of bringing it over for this TV yeah, show and yeah. that looks hype. I mean, they got it got the budget. It yeah. looks like it has the budget. The only questions I'm asking is because if they didn't choose to make a Penguin show, I don't think anyone would have asked, asked for one. Right. So what this show has to do is justify its existence. And I think that's going to be its biggest challenge because me personally, I've never thought to myself like, yeah, we should make a Penguin TV show because I've never... I, I like the Penguin as a, as a villain and it were as like cuz he's not like ever like a main villain in the Batman universe really he's more of a yeah. secondary villain so it's it's just going to be interesting to see like what is going to justify this story like i now i i just want to wait and see like what are they going to do to make us follow this character because he is a villain well it, it, I, it looks been, like, like it looks almost like they're pitching it almost as like a tony soprano like type like show where like you know he sort of almost gives you that vibe of james but gandolfini i don't i don't, I don't no no not really no because you know, no, they they did the thing with like the font was very sopranos like the with the with the uh the title card and all that stuff but i don't want it to be a james gandolfini situation or like the tony soprano vibe because right. The thing about Tony Soprano is it's a it's kind of a Walter White situation where you're attached to this character and he's and Tony Soprano of course more than Walter White is a bit he's a bit more charismatic so you're able to watch him and side with him but when it goes into its dramatic moments when it gets down to the core of who he is he's a piece of shit. Tony Soprano is a terrible fucking human being amazing character <laughs> amazing character but he's a piece of shit like right. he's a terrible and he's fun to being. watch he's fun to watch yeah but... of course he's fun to watch James fucking Gandolfini he's yeah. a goat he's the <laughs> goat of like he he's laminated himself as one of like the prominent like mafia characters like as like one of the like, 100%. As, a, as an actor portraying a mafia character he's one of like the goats you know I have the poster of the Godfather, Scarface, and the Goodfellas, and Tony Soprano. And they have him he's there, yeah. on that fucking poster. That's a great for a poster. Reason. That's a yeah, great poster. Yeah, he's on the poster for a reason. So yeah, so I don't want them to try to be like the Sopranos. It wouldn't work. I'm I'm very if they do that, I'm gonna be very confused because one of my gripes with the Batman was that like its cinematography and its actors and its writing for its characters were very dark. I didn't feel like the consequences match the tone of the movie where like there was a lot of bad shit that happened but i i wanted them to get their hands a little bit dirtier mm. where like i feel like playing arkham city and arkham knight there were very much like more fucked up moments in the batman that's my I, that's my biggest problem with the batman is that i love it so much because it does so much like it does so much justice to what, what like the core of Batman, this detective Batman, and all this stuff, but like, and and the fact that it like takes from every every best, it takes from a lot of great uh, Batman source material. Source and... material, yes. They had it took for, it took a lot from Telltale. It took a lot from the Long Halloween and Dark Victory. It took a lot from that. 
But my biggest issue with the Batman, and it's the most frustrating one, and, it, and it's the reason I couldn't give it like four and a half or five stars, was because it makes stupid mistakes. It what, makes what type of stupid decisions. mistakes? Like, f- for example, and it, it's obviously opinionated. It's yeah. opinionated. In my opinion, I wouldn't have done this. But the biggest, one of the biggest gripes in the movie is the scene where uh, the DA, one of the, the DA agents, walk outside to try to catch up with uh, Zoe Kravitz's Catwoman. And they show Riddler in the car. Right. Like, you know he's there before he gets to the car. And I thought it was a missed opportunity for us to just find out that he's in the car. I didn't like that they showed us he's in the car. Because it's just like, you know what's going to happen. It would have been, been a more effective scene, I feel like, if you just caught us off guard. Just like he got caught off guard. You know what I mean? I get what it you're saying. It sort of matches, like, how the character's feeling in that moment. Yeah. No, I, I get what you're saying. It's sort of, it's sort of, it would have been more of a, like, it would have been more immersive if yeah. it was, although, I don't know. Like, There's a it, lot of moments like that, though. That's just one. I'm just naming one. But, like, for example, the opening scene. Yes, the long Halloween, he has documentation of his nights. Yeah. You know, he's talking in the book, or, or like, over uh, what's actually happening. There's a lot of it in the long Halloween. For and sure. it happens in Dark Victory. And it's a too. great comic, also. It's That's great. One it's of amazing. my favorites. And... But it doesn't work for me, at least, in the beginning scene of the movie. I feel like if he had a little bit of a monologue after the opening scene, it would have worked when he's, like, talking about his experience. Like, if if they used the, the monologue, right, to describe what he's thinking afterwards... What we don't, what we're not able to see, because there's stuff that you're like maybe not able to show. But if you can uh, dissect the character's psyche with this journal, that would be interesting. Mm. But my biggest problem with the scene is like he's talking and describing what those characters are feeling, but we can clearly see what's going on in their heads, like the when they're looking into the shadows. Yeah, yeah, you know they're, what they're, they're looking for. He sees the the bass signal in the sky. You know what they're looking at. So I feel like imagine like there's no sun there's just the this theme, the Batman theme song and they're all like in fear. You feel it. You would right. feel it way more. And I feel like that's that's what uh that's what uh threw me off when uh, the first time I was watching I was the like, monologue this? sequences when he would just be talking over yeah. the uh, talking over all the scenes. It's just that specific scene. It's if they could have used the monologues from more in-depth um like explorations of his psyche where like he was just describing what we are seeing. I feel like when you want to like one of the best uses of having a voiceover is when you're describing stuff we can't see, you know? I there's see. obviously exceptions where, like, there's exposition here and there in movies, but, like, I, I just feel like it would have made that scene just so much more, like, impactful, you know? Obviously, you know, I'm, I'm, very, I'm, much of an ad, I'm very much of an advocate for showing and not telling. Right. And I feel like they missed out on that. But there's, there's a couple more things. But, yeah, we could... We can move on from that, but yeah, that's my whole thing with the with the Batman. I mean, it, it, here's here's my thing also with the Batman. Like, I also thought that like for like the stakes for like that first movie with like Riddler drowning the like the city, and you know we're gonna start getting into like spoiler territory here. But like when he drowns the, like, it's been the city, for a while. yeah, we've been there for a, for a little bit. But um, but he, with him drowning the city, it almost looks like from like the Penguin trailer when we go into like you know this is obviously like after the Batman. I'm assuming right, like the the, the city looks completely fine. You know, and so I'm always in the trailer. Yeah, it looks like it's just like normal, like a New York City type like vibes of like Gotham. You know, and I'm always and I'm always like, oh man, like I would love to see like sort of these sort of uh, big decisions that they make, sort of having like a like a continuation in these other movies because like the city just looks like it's all going normal as business as usual type thing. It could be that the my fault for interrupting you there. No, you're good. But it could be that the city has maybe they've like fixed it by then maybe this is like a while afterwards mm. you know because I'm, 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 I'm guessing yeah it could be a time jump i'm guessing the batman part two is going to be a bit after this you know i don't think they're going to go year by year maybe he goes year by year i don't know either way whatever he think thinks works as long as we get another great story but i one thing i definitely feel was i wanted def i wanted the the riddler to feel more visceral mm. and i feel like that was one of the uh, best moments which they spoiled in the trailer is when he floods the city but I feel like it could have been like everything before that could have had a better build up to that moment right you know where it, it was 
it's it's conflicting. I just feel like it could have been stronger, you know, because it's also like I've seen this type of stuff before. So partially it's like I'm I'm conflicted with like I've seen it before, but I'm also happy that you're showing it to a new audience for like people who haven't played the games, they haven't read the comics, you know, like it's a very it's still very strong. But the I like when you watch like the Dark Knight, for example, and I'm not trying to compare because obviously it's right. like, there's a big disparity there, but. Like, when you watch The Dark Knight, the Joker, like, every line that comes out of his mouth and every action, like, hits. You know, even even uh, Bane's opening scene alone mm-hmm. was stronger than a lot of um, a lot of the Riddler's scenes in these movies, you know. And, and, and this movie, specifically, in the, in the Batman. So, that I, wa- I want the Penguin to at least feel a bit more, yes, visceral. Like, more mm-hmm. gritty, a little darker especially since now we're gonna focus on the crime element of the city i don't want them to shy away from it and, and it might be it might be ma i think it might be mature it, it looks like it looks like it like it looks like there's a lot of like murder and stuff like they like in like the like in, like the trailer it's like they're like during production trailer and you know they have like the microphones on the like the top like while they're filming everything and it, i mean the scenes that they show it looks like penguin he gets his life threatened he ends up taking some lives like he's always doing like some stuff that's always like messed up and like I don't know, like, it still, it still did give me those sort of, you know, like, Tony Soprano, like, this is mob business, this is, like, this is the stuff that's happening, like, vibes, you know, and so that's, that's why I'm looking forward to it, I, I, I agree with you that, like, you know, nobody sort of, like, said, oh, we're looking for, like, a Penguin show, but, you know, Colin Farrell's great, and I'm looking forward to seeing what he does with this. Because, like I, because, like I said, like, when we say stuff like this, we're, like, if you've seen a lot of content, and you've seen enough movies, we've been spoiled. Yeah. So when you've seen content like this or shows like The Sopranos or you've seen stuff like The Dark Knight, you can't help but compare in a way because you've seen people reach that high point and it doesn't necessarily always have to reach but you could do your own thing, but I feel like there has to be always this level of impact, this this moment where you're like you have to like like take a breath for a second, right. you know, cuz right. it took you somewhere, you know, and like that's one thing I, I love about The Sopranos is it does a good job of basically being a dark comedy, but also <laughs> incorporating its dramatic elements so well, where like it never goes too over the top and it feels very real. Hmm. Everything feel every like comedic uh, situation in the show, every laugh feels earned and like it could have happened. Like this is not something that they just put in there like to have a joke. Like this is situational humor. You know what I mean? Like. That's what I uh, uh, I like. The, that's one thing the Batman did good too, where it wasn't like forcing comedy down your throat like all of these recent Marvel movies. You know? Yeah, they have like more like like stuff that like makes sense for the scene. Like Situational when humor, when, yes. when he takes out like the thumb drive thumb and then he's like, yeah, drive, <laughs> and he's like, oh, this guy's hilarious. Like that's what. Uh, no, nah, nah, Jim says. Gordon. I think this is uh, one of my. If I, if he keeps doing this good of a job, he might beat like the Nolan trilogy. Gordon for me because he's so funny. Oh, he's man. so good. It's it's tough because it's always it's always hard to. I'm to not top, saying he's better to yet. Top Gary Oldman. But, but Gary I, Oldman's hard to top. But I love him. Right, I love right. him in this movie. I loved him in. The, I, I remember I met him in person when I went to see the French Dispatch. And he was great in that too. He's an amazing actor. I for, I forgot his name, but yeah, he he's an amazing Jim Gordon. Yeah, he was okay. in Westworld also and like some other some other great. And, and then there's like the the there was a joke everybody missed it. I'm actually I'm not too sure if this was intentional, but somebody pointed it out and I was like, "Did he really make that joke?" But it makes sense when you watch the Batmobile scene and you know how they're like staring at the car and he's like Eeeh! and then he presses on the gas and it stops. Right. It was like somebody said it was like Matt. It was a it was a joke where Matt Reeves was trying to make this joke that like it was a stick shift, so it just stopped when he stepped on the gas, you know? Right. Which is funny <laughs> when you look back on it because he was trying. I like, didn't notice that. Yeah, no, that's that's actually very subtle. But it that. it also works better when you're thinking about it where he's taunting them, where he's like, "Come on," you yeah. know. But that's definitely something that Batman would do. Like he'd like fuck with them a little bit, like in their heads. Like yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. It works. It, it it works with the scene better. Like when he's kind of taunting them. But it it also still makes sense if it was that joke because it does give them time to get away. Where he's like fiddling with the fucking the gear shift in the car, and then the, he goes and catches up the penguin. But yeah. Also, yeah, that fucking one thing that was also funny when you realize, like, dude, he just killed so many people and Batman's just concerned with the penguin. Like, he's not... He, you just see his big Everything's fucking Everything's blowing up the 
It's terrible. It's terrible to think about. The you know, collateral damage. That was some Michael Bay shit. Man. <laughs> that shit was crazy. He's just like jumping over the explosions while all these people like on the bridge are just like. I still think, like maybe he did it because obviously that Batman's not ex- that experienced. But I would have loved if they did like the Arkham Knight shot where he can like eject from the car and he spreads his cape like a bat. Oh, and, right. and the flame. Oh, oh my God, bro! Didn't they happen. gotta do that in like the like the third one, maybe like they the won't. final one. Who knows? I they, think it would be interesting. If he's they he's inexperienced. So I remember when he tried to do that, he just hits the top of the thing. And like I, I was like, no, there's no way he would have he would have died when he would you know he fucking slaps against the top of the. Thing. I'll never forget when we were watching it with Herbert, and he he goes, "That motherfucker died, bro. He he's dead." <laughs> <laughs> There's no way he said that shit out loud. In everyone, the everyone was like saying, "Wait, no, maybe he has a helmet. Maybe he would survive it." I was like, "No, no, no, no." no, no, no There's no, a no. reason why football players get like concussions and stuff. <laughs> he ate shit, bro. He ate shit. That, that shit was so funny. Nah, that was ridiculous. But yeah. So to conclude, though, with the penguin, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't say much. It's the sort of I'm looking forward to it, but I don't know what to expect. Right. You know, they could, it could be a great surprise. It's the, I, you know how I feel about it? I feel the same way I did about Peacemaker. Where I was like, we're making a show about this random ass character from Suicide Squad. But then I was like, but it's James Gunn. It is James Gunn making it. It's James Gunn. And yeah, then it right. ended up being one of the best HBO shows that, that ever amazing. fucking came out for DC, bro. It's so good. And, it, so and also, like, when you re- rewatch, you know, the Suicide Squad that James Gunn made with the context from, like, the Peacemaker show, it almost also makes that, like, movie, like, more fun to, like, rewatch because you're like, you oh, you're yeah. bad a little bit yeah. for him, bro. <laughs> the dude got abused by a racist ass father, dude. <laughs> Yeah, no, he went. He went through some. He went through some stuff, and, then, and it's also like funny, like seeing what his like dad like bullies him about later, like knowing that like blood sport like just completely wrecks him. Like, like, like the dad was like so excited that oh he gets tortured by rats from his own dad. That's so good. He's like laughing. He's laughing. That he almost like he almost like like chokes like laughing. And Peacemaker gets so concerned for him. And he gets so nervous. My, um, I think my favorite thing, one of my favorite characters in Peacemaker, was just his neighbor. <laughs> who, who was like that he was like Batman doesn't kill people or something <laughs> like that yeah. like, that's why like Gotham is that's so why terrible. they keep coming back up yeah. that's why they keep coming back I don't back. have a rogues gallery because I kill them all <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, nah, the, I also uh, to praise John Cena's performance in that show because he's amazing underrated underrated performance because he was amazing towards towards especially the back half of the season where like he needed a lot there's a lot of emotion mm. that was needed bro James Gunn, well, he can get out of these people. You would never expect, like, John Cena and Dave Bautista have become such great actors. Bro, Dave Bautista is in Blade Runner 2049. Like, yeah. what? That's incredible. That. He's great That's that. awesome, dude. I love that. I love that so much. It's the yeah. same type of feeling where, like, bro, everyone was talking shit about Robert Pattinson, but I was one of the, we were one of the people was like... Y'all that's haven't it. seen Good Time. He's y'all have not time. seen Good Time. Y'all don't Lighthouse. know what y'all talking about. Lighthouse, oh, all that shit. Things. He's amazing. I, I I fell in love with Robert Pattinson the moment I watched Good Time. I get, like, after, because I was like, you know, was, everybody's into that. Like, you know, he's a Twilight boy, all this shit. But, like, Good Time is, like, a damn near You were You were like, telling so me to good. watch it for, like, for like a while. And I didn't watch it, like, until right before we watched Uncut Gems. And then right before that, because I was like, oh, it's the same director. I'm going to watch Good Time. Bro, I'm so I happy I watched, so bro, I'm so happy I watched so much Chris Stuckman because he was one of the people that was, like, well, he, he, I remember watching his review. He wanted people to watch it. And I remember when it was on Netflix, like, four years ago, I, I was in Europe. And I put it on, and I was like, this is amazing. I watched it all the way in one go. It's great. It's it's incredible, but yeah, bro. Thank God for Chris Stuffman, man. Like he put me on to so much shit. Like I, I've been watching. How long have I been watching him? For almost ten years now. Mm. Like 2014, 2013, I've been watching his videos. Dude. It's insane. Yeah, it's been a minute. It's insane. And he started around that time. He started like 2009, I think 2010. But yeah, hold on, my fucking MacBook just went into rest mode. How long? <laughs> can't can't let that happen. What where 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 were we? Um. But yeah, so Penguin, looking forward to it. Then we got, uh, along with a, a superhero content, the Marvels trailer was oh, released. Let's go. The Marvels trailer was released. <laughs> You're still boycotting the MCU, right? 
I'm not watching that shit. You're not watching. Yeah, you're not <laughs> I'm not watching that. You're, but I'm watching. You're still watching Guardians. It doesn't of the count. It doesn't but that's count. part of the it MCU. That's no, like no, entire... it's part of the James Gunn verse, bro. I, I, it's Guardians part of the, the Galaxy. Universe. The Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy <laughs> is completely separate, bro. You could, bro. It's the best trilogy in the whole MCU. Like fuck Avengers, because uh, like even Age of Ultron is setting up like everything else, bro. Guardians of the Galaxy one, two, and three are separate movies. You would understand I, that, I right? They're not connected. They're not connected to they anything ki- else. They kind of are. They're How? Gonna, they're, How? Volume, How does, three, what is, volume 3 is referencing stuff that happens in Avengers Endgame. So it's the How? MCU. Oh, she was like, oh, Gamora died, and then she came back, and then, oh, now you're a dick. You don't remember You don't remember that from the trailer? Though? I guess. I guess. Okay. It's the okay, MCU, okay, bro. Okay, it's okay, all connected. Okay. It's so... No, but it's like... But it's the... It, you could legit watch it without having seen... Endgame it's gonna be it's gonna like be it harder works. for volume three. It's gonna be harder for volume three just because Gamora died. There's all this like context and stuff, so it's gonna they be more difficult. I don't understand there. why can't they just do what the CW does and not make it so you have to watch every because they had these things where they would uh, at once a year they would collab all of the DC shows into like a every day there would be a, like an episode of Supergirl, Arrow, Flash, uh, Black Lightning, and then or something like that where they would mesh like it would be a five part event. But you could literally watch the episodes like you you could skip that whole thing and you wouldn't have missed anything. Well, come to so like but, it but, being like the interconnected makes it kind of fun, but then like there's a point where it just becomes too much. So it's it, they always gotta like tread lightly with that balance. You I know? personally now looking at what Marvel's doing now, they should have stopped at the Infinity Saga and let someone else helm the Marvel universe. Right. Completely. Like now it's just like it's done. Like, they, they, the directors are not even directing the movies anymore. I think James Gunn might be the last one. If, if, if Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is not good, I'll, I'll never watch a fucking Marvel movie. You'll again. go Under full Kevin boycott. Feige, bro, no. You'll go full boycott yeah, on, at that point. There's no, but there's no way. There's I think, no I think it'll way. be good. It looks pretty the great. The cinematography looks like it's the same. It's maintained. It's the best CGI. The colors Marvel, popping, you know. It's the best CGI in a Marvel trailer that I've seen in the last two two years since like Endgame, bro. Yeah, when we watch like the Marvels trailer, like the CGI in that Dude, trailer, it looks, looks like it looks like a student film. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like it looks like a student film, bro. I would. What? Which? Which CGI is better? The 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 Blue Beetle CGI or the 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 Marvels CGI? What do you think? Marvel v DC. The ultimate comparison. Of which, what, what are we thinking? What are we my thinking? only pro- my biggest problem with Blue Beetle is its cinematography. Mm. I don't like it. Just but the CGI bad. on the costume like looked like it solid. Looks, it, it, it's better than the the Marvels. Yeah, right. I think Blue Beetle in terms of CGI. Yeah, it doesn't. I I don't think either is going to be a good movie. But although I will say about like uh, the the Marvels trailer, like the the music slapped. I really like the music. Why are we that. still using nineties music? They're in <laughs> they're in the fucking future now. Because like, they know in... they know the hacks. They know how to get people hyped. No, like, but the, the whole idea of using Nirvana in, in Captain Marvel was, um, fuck, I, I break my brain for it. The whole point of using it was that it was in the nineties. Right. That was the whole point of using the Nirvana for Captain Marvel because it was in the nineties. Now we got the the Beastie Boys "Intergalactic," which was a great. You know, it's that's a, such a fucking great amazing song. song. I love the Beastie. It got Boys. me like why? it got me like I was like watching the trailer. I started like bopping. I was like, "Ooh, it's bet. amazing!" I love the Beastie Boys, but why are we still stuck in the nineties when this shit is like, you know? And I guess I, I I'm still gonna watch the movie just because you know I'm 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 just like uh, I'll, I'll I'll watch everything that comes out just because I I love going to the movies but like uh, no, I I'm, done, thing, I'm, I'm done with that. Done with I'm done with that philosophy because there's so much garbage coming out I can't stay I'm wasting my time I'm wasting my time Mafia Mama hey bro I, I Mafia to watch Mama that. yo we let's go a, see Mafia Mama we had a good time at the, no, at the theater not. yeah no, we did not. we did no, we did listen Tony Tony Collette and Monica Bellucci you know it's a it's a terrible movie needed a paycheck Check. But yes, they needed, they needed, <laughs> they a, paycheck. needed a paycheck, and it was it was it was just a time where they just riffed on like a bunch of like the Godfather references and all this stuff, and it was just like yeah, you just turn your brain off and you just you know you just enjoy the audience enthusiasm because it's an early screening. But otherwise, yeah, ter- uh, not the best movie. It's all like very it's, we've seen it a million well, times. Uh, but yeah, no, like I, I enjoy going to the movies. So I'll go to, I'll go to Marvels. I'll go to Marvels. I'll, I think it's good that it's not an origin story movie. So I'm glad about that. And it's like, they're sort of having this fun idea of them all swapping between each other's. Like, that was interesting. I'll admit that that's, that's, and that's an interesting idea. But like, other than that, it, pu- it also puts like Captain Marvel, who is usually like the most, the most too OP character, the most uncharismatic character in the MCU. 
Right, and, and she's so OP, but now she's forced into this position where, like, now she has to, like, entangle with, like, the powers in different situations where she's not in control, so it's, like, it also puts her in a spot that's that, I guess, is, like, better just for her character. But, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with the movie. I'll let you know my thoughts on it when I come on after watching. I'll let you know. But, yeah, I know I know you gotta keep the boycott up except for Guardians 3. Yeah, no, I'm done with that. I'm done with the MCU, man. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not feeling it. I mean, it, look, it, when I first watched the Marvel show, I was like... It's fine. It's like, fine. It, it's yeah. not the CGI doesn't look good, but like in terms of the idea and like the plot, I guess what they showed is like I was like, it's not that bad. I'm surprised they're reusing like Nick Fury again and so soon, like before like Secret Invasion premieres. So I guess like we just sort of know, okay, Nick Fury is gonna be fine and all this stuff. So it's once again like that like plot armor that just continues with all these movies where like, okay, something's coming out soon after, you know, it's everything's gonna be fine. We don't gotta worry. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, well, I mean what were you expecting? I mean, hey, man, eventually they got to kill some of these characters off. <laughs> eventually, right? <laughs> Never going to happen. Hey, they, they killed off Black Widow and Tony Stark. Bro, I'm, I'm like, it's, it's already hot as fuck in here. And now you're exhausting my mental capabilities <laughs> talking about the MCU. Shut, like, stop. All right, all right. We can, stop, stop. We can, we can, moving on. We can move moving on, on moving to the on. next new cinematic universe of, you know, the John Wick cinematic universe yes, that they're now making yes, with the Continental yes, yes, yes. in this, this new trailer. That just the dropped. The Continental teaser dropped. It's going to be premiering on Peacock, I believe, in September. It looks fine. It looks fine. It looks fine. I, I can't. I can't. I'm not. I'm not saying I'm hyped for it. It's the sort of thing where, like, we have John Wick Four. <laughs> John Wick Four. We have will the crim de la difficult crim to of top. action. That will be difficult to top. And then, I mean, so far it looks like it's going to be action packed. That's one thing I'm looking forward to. Um, the cinematography looks fine. It looks like TV, like if, for a TV show. That's the one thing I guess I appreciate more about the Penguin is that it looks like they're keeping the visuals of the Batman consistent. And then the Continental is changing that, and that that always worries me because it's a different vibe. It gives a different vibe. A little to bit. John Wick. But it looks fine. I I have yet to. Let me let me look at the cast who's in it. It's gonna be a challenge for them also because this is gonna be like the first like John Wick universe type thing that they're doing without Keanu Reeves and without you know Chad the director. I like of the, the John Wick idea movies. though. I like the idea that it's Winston sort of coming up in the hotel. I guess. I guess that's the idea. Is, is that it? I don't know for let sure. Me, I, let me. See. I mean, it doesn't really say anything, but I think. It I just know follows. that it's about like the Continental, so it's like they can be they can make any story that they want. Albert as long Hughes as it's is one of the directors. He's. This dude is 51. What the fuck? He looks young as shit. Um, he made... Uh, did he actually make this? He was one of the people that wrote Menace to Society. Mm. He was the one of the directors. The One of the directors of Menace to Society is one of the... Like, working on... I haven't seen that. No, I haven't seen it either. Um... That's the only good piece of work I've seen on it. But it's weird that he's directing the continent. I don't see the big connection. But they always hire people. like Because some, sometimes you haven't worked on something that you could make good. So maybe it's yeah. that sort of thing. Give uh, give but, people a shot. Yeah, but yeah, no, we'll see. That's we'll what see, Marvel did with it's, a lot of the Marvel shows. Yeah, for sure. And stuff like that. And, and like, it's going to be... I, th- I remember you mentioned it's going to be like a three-parter. Like it's like it's just like three three episodes or something like it that it says keanu reeves is in the cast he is i thought he wasn't involved i, thought I told you that jump <laughs> <laughs> i recognize that fucking waddle anywhere bro you think that was John Wick in the trailer no way bro he went like <laughs> he fully did a gta 5 jump bro that's how he moved he might be involved as like i don't know like an executive producer or something but like mm. just like funding the thing I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I'm excited for it. I'm, I'm, I'm. I love John Wick, so I'm, I, I'm, I want to look at what they're gonna do with this story. But I don't know what to think of it yet. But I, I, it's John Wick. It's the John Wick universe. I love the John Wick universe, so I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, dude. I'm more excited for uh, the ballerina, the ballerina movie, the Ana de Armas uh, yes. action film that they're making That's gonna in be the John dope. Wick universe. That's gonna be dope. I'm, I'm excited because she was amazing in uh, No Time to Die. Great scene, but why the fuck did they have to make it only five to ten minutes? It was yeah, it was just a small scene. Or it was like the shit they did with Halle Berry in John Wick Three, except we got more (laughs) in that movie. Oh my god! And she had like the infinite, infinite ammo. She 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 reloaded. She fits into that role perfectly. Yeah, 
Like it was like it, bro. When she appears on screen, it's like you've been watching her for like a decade. You know, like she was she owned that like role in the universe. Like she f- just fits into a James Bond movie for sure. For like a hundred percent. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. The, the and she was like movie. a fun character because she was also like very like new to it, charismatic. Like, yeah. The way she, bro, she's amazing. She's awesome. I love. So her. we'll see. We'll see how how she does with like the ballerina movie. Um, yeah. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Yeah, so what do you I mean wait, like what do you think? What do you are you looking forward to the Continental? I mean, I'm going to I'm going to watch it. I'm still like I'm still like a little nervous cuz I do think that like okay, we're we're doing like the cinematic universe thing again and you know, I still thought that 4 was like the perfect like conclusion, but the thing is that they built such a world that they can make new original stories, so I'm excited for that. Um so yeah, I'll well, definitely watch it. I'll definitely watch it when it, and it's not too long. You said like it was definitely a three parter, right? Like it's not too it's not too long or is that the It's one? three episodes. Three episodes, yeah. So like I it's think. it's it's not too much of a time commitment. You can I definitely think watch it might it be fun. though, I think each episode might be like ninety minutes or mm. something like that. Some something along the lines of that. Got you. But, but yeah, speaking of John Wick and Keanu Reeves, he's teaming up with Jonah Hill for a new movie called Outcome. And I think it has something to do with uh, cancel culture and stuff like that. Let me read the synopsis. But I'm excited because it's Jonah Hill directing another movie, and I love mid '90s. Mid '90s is one. Yeah, of we had a great movies. time with mid '90s when we were at the like that was a such a fun movie. I mean, we right. didn't watch it together. There's a story behind that. Yeah, yeah. That, that <laughs> fucking asshole, bro. Um, yeah, there was a guy. We we tried to go see it with a bunch of our friends. Mid '90s opening. We got it a week early because. New York and LA, they get these like indie movies earlier. I mean, it's not really an indie movie because A24 produced it and Jonah Hill's kind of a big name. But yeah, it was his directorial debut. And we bought the tickets, right? So when you purchase a ticket, we they're supposed it. to ask you for ID. And they didn't. So that's on the reg- that's on the cashier's uh it's the cashier's fault. Right. We go upstairs. And this nerdy fucking dude, bro. This dude, this geeky looking motherfucker. Like, like, bro, we get up there and he's like, yo, can I see some ID? And I'm like, we're like 15, 16. What do you mean? Like, what ID? And he's like, he's like, oh, it's a rated R movie. You have to be 17 in order to see the movie. I'm like, okay, but we're about to miss the movie. And this is like, not your job. Like, I'm like, dude, this is, they sold us the ticket. They it's done. It's right. done. Yeah, you're done. So he's like, oh, let me talk to my manager or something. And he lets us go through afterwards because the manager gave him an okay. And then we walk past. We're about to walk into the theater. We're already like 20 minutes late because of him. And he's like, wait, 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 wait. Come back, come back. My manager's actually going to come here and talk to you guys. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, my fucking gosh, bro. Like, that dude got me tight. And then... She comes and looks at us like, yeah, you guys can't see this movie. We'll refund the ticket. We'll give you a fr-. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Like, you sold us the ticket. You already committed the crime. <laughs> you already committed the crime. Just let us in. It's a fucking movie. It's, it's mid-90s. So There's, no There's no way. There's no I would not give that much of a fuck if I was working there. I would not give that much of a fuck. You got the ticket? That's her problem. Go to granny downstairs who can't fucking read the, the rating on the ticket, bro. Leave us alone. Jesus Christ! Yeah, no, and then I and then a week later I went to see it by myself, and I had to buy a ticket for Goosebumps too. To to get the and because the screening was at four thirty, and mid nineties was at like uh three thirty five or three thirty or something like that, I came in five minutes late to the movie, which was just the intro scene where he's where uh Sonny Soldier's character is looking through his brother's room and stuff like that, which wasn't the most important thing, but. I got in at that scene, but I had to wait till 4 o'clock to get into the theater because they're only allowed to let you in 30 minutes before showtime. Mm. So I was like, dude, oh my God. It was, it was rough. But I used to go, it was like uh, 3.55. I was like, you know, just go in, bro. He's like, I don't give a <laughs> shit. But yeah, they're, they're annoying. They're, because like, you could legit, they're so, it's such an easy loophole. It's so ridiculous. Like, it's the same thing with the drinking age. It's the same thing with the movie. Like, there's you. There's no controlling it. There's no re- like. There has to be like a reasonable age. Like if you put, like obviously there has to be a limit. Like yeah, seventeen. Like I get it. It's a rated R movie, but there's dead ass some movies that are rated R because of language. Yeah, they have it's it because so of language. So weird. And there's nothing about mid nineties. Well, there was also the one scene where like the young kid and um, I forgot her the character. Um, what's her name from Euphoria? 
The, Alexa Deming. Alexa Deming. Yeah, yeah. With the but what's thing. so <laughs> funny? No, but what? This is why it's stupid. Is because it's involving characters our age. Right. Like, like it was younger, sort of, younger. Yeah, no, but I know the kids in that movie, like the uh, the skating dudes, were like sixteen to eighteen. Right. right. You know what I mean? Sonny Soldier's character was like, uh, I believe, like. 13, 12 in the movie, something like that. But I'm no, I'm just saying, like in general, the the cast of characters in the movie was kids our age. So I'm like confused, like unless there's like an extreme amount of like violence towards these kids or something. I'm like, dude, like just. Yeah. Now later, I came across that guy that you know, like that stopped us from getting through. Like I, I, I went for like another rated R movie, and I went up to him. Like he was at like the area where you know where they sell like the popcorn and like all the concessions and stuff. And I went up to him and I was like, "Oh, hey, you know, I'm watching, I'm watching a radar movie right now. You remember me?" And he's like, "Oh, yeah. I mean, listen, dude, it's my job. I don't want to lose job. it. So, fuck your job. So that was his explanation of fuck when him. I came up to him later. You no, know, because he messed up a screening I had with a friend like during this, like a couple months later. Oh, yeah. We went to go see Fighting with My Family back in 2019, and the screen was so it's supposed to be widescreen. It's supposed to fill up the entire screen when you're in a standard theater." It was twice, like, oh, it was no. half the size of the screen. So, the widescreen, there was, like... Like, the black bars were cutting much. it. No, there were no black bars. They didn't even have the black bars? It was, like, imagine, like, on the laptop, bro. Like, you're watching the movie like this. Right. So, it wasn't that something was... He came out and said, there's something wrong with the projector. We're trying to fix it. They just started the movie like that. <laughs> and I went outside. I remember that's when we came back with uh, you and another... One of your friends from back in high school... We went back in, and since there were four of us, he was like, oh, yeah, so you want four tickets? Because they were giving us a refund, basically, for the movie. And I was like, yeah, four tickets. And then so you guys lucked out because you didn't see the movie, but you also got free <laughs> tickets. tickets. And then I was like, wait, can I just go to an AMC and do this? And then we went to 86 and got fucked. <laughs> like that, that's literally what happened. We went to the guy. He was like, because we were trying to talk about the Lego movie, too. And I was like... He probably knew that the screening wasn't like that and that we were lying and we were trying to get free tickets because then I realized, like, these guys work here all day. They definitely know if there's a They've problem seen, with yeah. that thing. Sorry for... <laughs> no, you're good. No, they, they definitely see. They definitely see. Like, they, they, they can peep inside the movie theater and stuff. And they yeah. have, like, that area up above where they see from, like, the projector. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did. It was probably with our uh, screening was there was multiple people complaining, complaining about, about it. it. So they gave the free yeah, tickets out. Can't do I remember the Lion King... Jesus Christ, they formed, they squished the image and like to save on like the projection, I guess. the mar- I don't know. And it was like not that bright, the screen. Because I was the only person at nine o'clock in the morning watching The Lion King and Dolby. You were like in an empty theater, I remember. I called you. I was yeah. like, yo, this is scary as fuck. And then the movie ended. And then like the whole time there was no one there. And then all of a sudden I get up and there's one guy in the corner of the theater. Like, <laughs> Just watched it. Maybe he came in like for like the last 20 minutes. Yeah, fuck that movie, dude. That shit was trash. Um, But back to, back to Jonah Hill's new movie. It's going to come out on Apple Plus, and it's uh, presumed to be a dark comedy. But let me see the synopsis. I want to know, because I read something that was, uh, had something along the lines to it, cancel culture, but... Or actually, maybe not. I mean, maybe, maybe not. This is the this is the synopsis, right? So, he uh, Jonah Hill uh, co-wrote a movie with Ezra Woods. Which follows Re- uh, Keanu's character, Keanu Reeves' character, Reef, a damaged Hollywood star who must confront the darkness of his past after a mysterious video, video clip surfaces. Mm. So, it might have to do something with that. I'm actually not sure. It sounds along the lines like maybe something comes up from his past and now like he, he's got to deal with the consequences and save his career and something like that. But... Yeah, we'll see. I'm excited for it because it's Keanu Reeves and working with Jonah Hill. So even I bet you Jonah Hill's losing his fucking mind. Yeah, that he's like, yo, I get to make a movie starring Keanu Reeves. Like that's insane. I mean, wasn't like Jonah Hill like really hyped to even be working with like Scorsese for like Wolf he took, of Wall he, Street? He, he did it for he took a pay cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just like, you know, I don't care. It's just it's just the experience of working with no, Scorsese. No, he took a pay and... cut because of Leonardo DiCaprio, bro. Mm tough i'm not gonna lie dude i'm not gonna lie if they're offering you like like they uh, keanu reeves got paid 15 million but like if if i was in leonardo dicaprio's position like obviously you're leonardo the fucking caprio like you're literally that guy you're him you know but if jonah hill's taking a pay cut i'd be like dude you guys are paying me already like how wait 
let me let me do my research first. Yeah, how much how much just did he in get case paid? how much did leonardo dicaprio get all I know for sure is that Jonah Hill definitely took a pay cut, and but he, he was got just paid happy. Twenty thousand dollars for it. Yeah, he was just happy to be working with Scorsese. Bro, Leonardo DiCaprio got paid ten million dollars for Jordan Belfort. Mm. Dude, if Jonah Hill, if I was working with Jonah Hill and he gave him that performance, I would have been like, "Here you go." <laughs> I would have gave him some of that, dude. What the fuck? Like Keanu Reeves did that. He gave like I think it was like, I forgot how much he won. I, it had to be along the line. It was either seventy thousand. I think it was seventy thousand or seventy million. It was something he won like an Oscars, and there was like some money or some shit involved. Do you get any money with that? You don't get money with the Oscars, right? No, I mean you, it, you, be it, it helps. Else. It helps with like your career and just like getting paid more. And he other won games. money. He won money, and he gave the special effects designers of the Matrix the seventy thousand dollars. I think sick, yeah, to help them out because they're they're very undervalued. VFX artists. Uh, stunt coordinators these people are very undervalued in this business so like, well i heard that for like some like the one of the john wick movies or like something like that he gave like the stunt people like a bunch of like rolexes and stuff and like other like little gifts and stuff after they wrapped you know so keanu's yeah, just like he's just a goat yeah, you know? dude that was nice as fuck yeah rolex and it said Woo. like john wick 4 on it and stuff like that dude you <sighs> no, know how much like that watch is worth because it's custom there's right. only uh, like a few of those in the world but nobody's gonna get their hands. Well, on it just goes to show that Keanu Reeves is just like a national treasure. Unless you know? one like, of the you're breathtaking, you know, like everyone just loves loves him. You know, he's just saying? very humble. He's very he's down. He's literally the definition of down to earth. He's a very down to earth human being. He's very kind. He's not he's not looking for any conflict on anybody. He, he's very much the type of guy to diffuse a, any like rough situations. He's right. the, he's the guy that's trying to come out peacefully, which is ironic because he plays a character who <laughs> could take down an entire government. I'm going <laughs> to kill I'm going to kill them all. Bro, after <laughs> fucking John Wick 4, I'm convinced he could take down like governments, like plural. <laughs> Like he could, like he could destroy, like. <laughs> well, that's why they had that great scene in like chapter two, where, uh, where like one of the guys was like, "Are you here? Why are you in like Rome? Are you here to kill the Pope?" And then, like, and then he was just like, "No, I'm not here to kill the Pope." He's like, "Okay, good. Continue with your business." <laughs> he was like, "Are you here to like, kill the Pope?" It's so good. It's so funny. Me and my friend were talking about it, like, "Yo, what if like there was an army of John Wicks?" And I was like, "Dude, not a single." fucking one of them would die <laughs> not a single you don't need an army you just need him he's a one man army unless like if they're insane. up against Kane you know that's the, that's the only thing just Kane could probably get like a few of them he would have beat Kane <laughs> I don't he know beat Kane. he would have <laughs> beat Kane if he was like 100% like in the beginning of chapter 4 uh, and then this Kane one on one he could have beat Kane the dude's Maybe. blind he had that moment where he could have shot him, but then he realized that he was out of ammo. Remember when he was like looking at? <laughs> I, love, I love that there's a shot of like he's, he's just getting, like checking. Like, he's holding the sword and he's like doom doom doom, like shooting at him, and Keanu is like jumping, like he's, like he's doing everything he can to dodge bullets. What a great movie! Yeah, yeah, incredible. But um, let me see what's uh, next. All right, so we're gonna talk about the biggest news of the week. Ooh. The biggest... Big spoilers. Surprise of the week. <laughs> We're going to be talking about Succession. Yes, full spoilers. So, <laughs> episodes one through three have been released. There's seven more episodes in this season. The kids are fucked. <laughs> yes. I told you that fucked. immediately. Like, I was like... Kendall, <laughs> Shiv, and Roman... Count your fucking days. And Connor <laughs> it's too. Over. Connor's vibing. Connor. He married a thought. He's chilling, bro. He's chilling, bro. They're happy, bro. They don't care about the business. He's trying. But to what if things. what if Connor runs out of all the money and then you know Willa just says you know I was like we had the the safety and all stuff. I'm happy with you, but you know the safety did play a factor. The so elephant, they could all be let's ruined. Just, the elephant in the room. Logan Roy is dead. Logan Roy has fucking died. And to be honest with you, I was so conflicted because I was like, how could, how, how could you do this? How, how could you die? It's so random. What are you doing? What it was perfect. It, it was like they set up like you're watching it. Like somebody was talking about this on TikTok where I was watching this video. He was like, dude, you come back to Succession. It's like, oh, it's another week of Succession. It's your 
It's your new, like, what shenanigans are going to happen again? And then, you know, he's talking about the day, and he's, like, planning, and I was like, oh, we're going to fucking uh, take over Rome or something. He says, like, some crazy <laughs> shit, like, Tom says some funny shit. And then all of a sudden, you see Thomas calling, and then you realize why he's spam calling everyone. Because he's not just, because when he calls Shiv, you, you think, think like, oh, is, yeah, he's just trying to apologize, trying to, trying to apologize, do all this like, stuff. trying to talk to her and stuff, and then he starts calling Kendall. And Kendall picks up the phone. He's like, yo, what the fuck is going on? And he's like, yo, Logan is in a bad fucking, <laughs> like, is in bad condition. Like, it's critical. Yeah, he was Literally calling critical. Robin. It was, like, it, and that, like, it's so great. It's so great because then they have to go and get Shiv. You know, they have to, like, after they talk. Oh, and, man, it's you know? tough, bro. Because, no, because, like. <laughs> Shiv will live with that guilt forever of just knowing that, oh, I could have picked up right away when, when Tom was calling me and I could have probably talked to my dad when he was like more alive that fucking bitch yo she was like yo like oh you guys didn't tell me about this before pick up your phone pick up your phone you're an asshole I mean if if, if if Tom betrays you the way that he betrayed you know like it's 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 sort of a, I, I was so glad that Tom went that like around like he stood up for himself he, he but he ended up back in the wrong horse because Logan dies immediately after he chose Logan because when he was talking to Kendall he was like listen you are a fuck up. Like you, like you always mess up, Kendall. Like I've Logan, never seen Logan lose. I've never seen Logan lose, and so he picks Logan. And then the great, like, hilarious tragedy that always happens with Tom is that as soon as he picks Logan, as soon as he starts rising someplace, Logan dies. And so now Tom, <laughs> Tom is screwed. Greg is screwed. The kids are all screwed. They're all, they're all like, it's over. You know, and it's gonna be so great to watch. And this is the end game, and I'm so excited. I'm so glad they did it the way they did it, where it was so random. It was just like another episode of Succession, like you were saying. It's, the dude it's, was old, bro, and I mean the character is old. The yeah, the character, I mean, the actor is, obviously, but like I'm saying, like the character is fucking old. Like, and no, and Brian dude already had problems. Like the janitors of I, Idaho <laughs> episode. Like if you watch, if you yeah. seen that episode uh, last season when they were dealing with like the shareholder meeting, he was seeing an imaginary cat. And he's like, get the cat out of here. They're like, they like pretending to get the cat out of there. And also, like it, they set it up from like the first episode where he immediately has problems, and you know he like that's how the show starts with him having health issues. You know, it's just it's just built up so well. And Brian Cox, the actor that plays Logan, he's you know, fuck he's, off. He's the he's the goat. You know, like he's he's the great. He's been like the main character, like one of the main characters in my opinion of the show. Just like this, like tragedy of like you know the way that you raise your kids, and you know you've raised them and brought them up, and they have all these flaws just because you also want to hold on to the power. You see life as a game where you always have to win, and you raise these kids, you give them all these flaws, and you can't take them seriously. They're not serious people. He said it. But he's and, also the that's I think that's also funny because I think he's using the business as a way to cope with the failure of his children. Yeah. Because he sure. failed as a father. Yeah. And, so it, that's why he's like he's like this I have to focus on this because this is what's winning. This is what will help. Like blah blah blah. Like he's he. That's what makes him also like a very. It's terrible just. Person. It's just such a great role. Like the actor has so much to work with, and you know Brian Cox definitely said like you know this is you know my, one of my best roles, and the way that he was committed, he was like yo I knew about my death like like well, like way before a lot of the people before we started shooting season four, and it was nerve wracking for me because I've never had to keep like a secret this long, and so he was like holding on to the secret, and the way that he did it, he's such a he's such a like good sport for this. He came to the set of succession after they already like killed him off after they wrapped him he came on some other days when they were just filming just to like throw off the paparazzi and like all like the people that were trying to leak stuff about like the show matt reeves did that with the with the batman too yeah and so he he would come onto the set like after he was already dead and just be chilling there and just like be like like you know socializing just genius it's so good and you know like he's he's such a great sport and it's such a amazing it's 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 like the modern day like king lear like like shakespeare stuff you know where it's just sort of like you know instead of like all these like monarchies and all this stuff that you, it used to be of the past is now just like these companies and just how like modern modern day politics and modern day all this stuff just leads to this uh like way where all these characters just have such flaws and such problems and it's so fun to watch yeah. them it's so fun and, it's so entertaining and as good as the the reveal is as good as all that is i think one of my favorite parts of this episode of succession is watching the kids deal with the grief because you feel bad there's a level of like you feel bad they just lost their father but you also feel conflicted because like don't you hate this guy and then there's also mm -hmm. this this other layer of it where they're immediately like 
Kendall immediately goes to, we have to preserve ourselves. Like, mm-hmm. we can't just jump into the public eye and deal with this and all this stuff. It's going to look really bad. Like, they immediately go into, like, preservation mode for themselves, which is so interesting because you, you'd, I, I, the ideal situation, what would, what would happen with, like, normal, I guess, like, normal people were not in that situation. Everything. You, you drop everything. Right. You know? You drop everything. When If you lose someone like that in your life, it's a situation where shit stops for a while. Because that's not an easy thing to maneuver through and all that. And it's it's just interesting to see characters who have... You understand them because they have this level of hatred, justified hatred towards their father. But it's also their dad. Yeah. So it's this interesting just exploration. And it's also due to the performances. Like, holy... Oh, like, holy fuck. Like, you're watching... like. I, uh, I love you, Dad. I guess I. I <laughs> Roman. like, Roman's like uh, uh, fuck. I, I I can't. I can't. Can't do this. I can't, I can't do talk this. to him. He's no, like, like they. They all had such great moments there. Like Shiv has like a moment where you know usually she's so stoic and she's like like you know doing like girl boss all this stuff and then she just ha- has like this moment where she's like Daddy like like don't do this like don't like don't go please don't do this and it's like crazy you know like it's wild. yo could you imagine could you. Imagine? <laughs> if Kendall picked up the phone and he was like L to the OG <laughs> R to the OG A and he playing L to the OG R to the IP bro like, that, like that's what he was doing bro <laughs> Like that's the that's the last that's the last thing Logan hears in his ear before he dies <laughs> just Kendall singing that song bro R to the IP A and he's playing <laughs> I own his IP. <laughs> oh my god, bro. Dude, that shit would have been... <laughs> that would have been too good. Just, just a Logan, just like... I feel like he would like revive if he heard some <laughs> s- stupid shit like that. He would just like... He would come back out of spite. Imagine he just starts laughing about it. He's like so happy that he's fucking dead, bro. Could you imagine if Roman picked up the phone and he said some shit like... Because nah, this would be a very Roman thing. And he'd be like, ah, I'm sorry I sent you dick pics, I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just such a, that's such a great show, dude. It's so great. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. <laughs> and poor Connor, bro. Poor <laughs> Connor. Good, bro. Yeah. Poor, poor Connor, bro. was just like, yo... He never liked me. He never. He just. He just nah, he, nah, nah, I'm not gonna lie. I fucking hate Connor. I th- he's like a great actor because he's all. I love him from our Ferris Bueller's Day Off. But fuck it, I hate Connor. I fucking hate, hate Connor. Connor and then that, but that line got me where he was like, he was like, he never loved me anyway. <laughs> he's just like, and they're like, dude, what the fuck? Like, I'm sorry. I don't I'm know sorry. why I said that. It was just like, it I was ne- so real. It was so real, and he was like, I never got to make him proud. Like he was, he was immediately like, it just hit him. Like he didn't even have time to process. He just, just was so upfront with his feelings. He was always like the guy that was always like very upfront with how he felt. About I'm not, this. not this. Genuinely, like the more I think about this episode, yes, it's probably one of the greatest uh, TV episodes ever written. Because also one thing I love, because I, like I said, I fucking hate Connor. Mm. But one of my favorite scenes was the heart to heart he has with um Willa. Willa. And he asked her, like, are you just like he's basically asking, like, are you just here for the fucking money? Like just tell me at yeah. this point. Like we're at a wedding. And my and, dad just died. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, so like, yeah, I'm like, you can't hurt me anymore. <laughs> right, right. And then she but it, it was this kind of like sweet moment where she was like, Yes, like there's some security in like with your finances and stuff like that. Like obviously I'm gonna be happy with that, but it's like She's also like, I'm actually kind of happy here. Like, it's not, like, I'm happy with you, which is, which was nice. It's like, it it's like sort of a backhand comment, but it's the sort of thing where she and him, they put each other through so much throughout the seasons. And Connor has put her in so many awkward situations. Oh, for sure. With this family? Yeah. <laughs> so, it was, it was nice to see them have a semi, like good moment you know that was one of my favorite scenes in the movie and we'll, sure. we'll I mean, the, we the, always got to appreciate about connor is that connor roy has been interested in politics since a very young age you know we always got to appreciate that about connor he's just he's 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 always had an interest bro I, you're referring to something and that's a reference that's a reference yeah right? no nah, i was like i've heard that that's one of the, that's where one is one that from that's one of the major memes bro where when like a reporter came up to him when they were at the funeral for uh uncle mo who they called mo because his 
name was Lester, so they called him Uncle Mo because his name was Mo Lester. That's how they, they thought of him. It, when the reporter came up to him and like they were coming up with all this dirt, dirt about Uncle Mo, he would just be like, "All I all, my only comment is that Connor Roy has been interested in politics since a very young age." While this reporter's trying to dig him up all this information, it's no, such I a think, great show. You know it's what's such one, a great one, show. one of my favorite moments, and you kind of spoiled it for me. But it was the line where it's like, you have to break a few Gregs to make a Tomlet. <laughs> Such a good but it, the, line. what's Such what's so amazing line. about that 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 scene is that it, it like it catches you off guard because <laughs> it's during a fucking like uh, what is it like a, a like a case? It was yeah, during, they like, were a they were getting the trial. And it was a, during everything. a trial. Yeah, it was during a trial. Uh, Holy fuck! No, but it's it's definitely like one of like the like the main shows right now that's going on where it's just like yeah this is gonna be remembered and the way that this episode like really comes out of nowhere and it's gonna change the game for the next I think you said seven episodes right because I love this is what I'm talking about like when I talk when I talk about third acts that's the type of shit that right. needs to go down yeah. in the third act because the third act needs to fundamentally change the 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 rest of whatever is to come next like the ending of the movie the rest of the seasons whatever it is or whatever comes next like that's what's so good i'm watching beef right now we'll talk about that in a few i gotta catch up i haven't seen that show amazing show uh beef does that where like the last few episodes kicks into high gear and i think that's that is my biggest problem with tv shows movies everything get like Things need to kick into high gear when you get to that third act. That's the penultimate moment where, like, shit is going down. This is why you come to this. this like, it's, it. it's the beat drop. Yeah. It's, like, it's the same thing when you listen to music and there's, like, the da 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 bah! Like, there's, this, there's a beat drop. That's the that's the part you look forward to in a song. And sometimes it could be something else. Like, maybe there's a part of a song that you, genuinely it just sounds better and you're looking forward to that. But there's always something that changes. The, the best, some of the best songs have a beat switch, you know, sure, or a, beat, yeah. a great beat drop. That's what I'm saying. So like, that and this shit was is like, this was a hell of a beat drop. Just like the way that they executed his death, because like for like a while, like my mom who was watching the show with me, she was almost in denial. She was like, no, that he's gonna come back at like the last moment, like in this episode, like he's gonna, they're gonna do something. That's going. what's also really good about the writing. That's complimentary to the writing because even the kids are like, yo, he's. Fine. He's bullshit. gonna, yeah, like bullshit. he's he, no, 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 like like Roman was like, you're such a you're such an asshole that you will come back to life like to smite us, like you like he was like saying something like that where he was just like you're you're you're, you're too you're too powerful to to just die like this, and you know like like my mom was saying like she was like saying after like this episode she was like the reason why like I really love this show is that the, he, like they managed to make this such an iconic show without any gratuitous like violence or gratuitous sex without all that with just great dialogue great characters great interactions and just you know like this 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 crisis of, of family that they got going on and it's it's it really is like just so so like powerful it's like it gives me like the game of thrones like lannister family dynamics without without all the excess stuff that you get in that show with just yeah we're focusing on this really messed up family and all like the dynamics in there uh kieran culkin who plays roman um he was talking about it where he was like yeah i the the last of us i'm surprised they didn't make it a uh, a tv show or like a movie first because it's such a rich story and they made it to a game and he was like thinking about it, was like, but when you think about it Succession would make a, make a pretty boring video game <laughs> <laughs> like, it would probably make a terrible video game bro. <laughs> I mean who imagine knows, a Telltale a tel- like, yeah, yeah that's tel- what I was tel- about, you read my mind I was about to say like a Telltale game where you could like pick like the dialogue options and just like work your way through there oh man that would be f- Funny, that would be kind of yeah that would be I'm, i wonder how greg and tom would look the disgusting <laughs> brothers yeah that would be great yeah so what else what else oh the poster had a great easter egg in that fucking poster because yes. you look at it when you look i at didn't it know this for, uh, at face value it's like it's just the character standing around it's your cl- classic ensemble poster but on the but reflection you look at the reflection of the windows behind them there's a fucking airplane in yeah. the sky oh, <laughs> in it's the so genius it's so why genius. is it like why would they just put a random airplane in the poster you know what i mean that's the airplane bro. That is the airplane. that is the airplane where all of their lives the airplane will change. is him the airplane is him, bro. No, and somebody was talking about also with Logan Roy uh, fixing his watch. Mm. Like, his times running up. But I think that's, uh, that's, 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 that's more a of a stretch. Of a reach, but... The plane, though, that's a genius little thing. And it really, like, makes you think, like, Kendall had that line where he was like, you know, like, 
this is the day that our dad died and so all of our decisions on this day will be remembered and so we gotta be like mad like like careful and stuff and when you look at like that like poser so like yo that's like the plane that you know their dad died this changes everything from the show from here on in like they there was that discussion of oh everyone thought that succession would be five seasons instead of four seasons but clearly the writers thought yo we have to do this now while logan is making these two huge decisions in like the company like these two big deals <laughs> and they had to do it now, this would be the moment where the kids would be most vulnerable without him. If it's you perfect. also think about it as a layout, like as an outline, it makes sense because each season focuses on a kid, and then now it's like all three of them together. Yeah, yeah, and, and the, the intro and has that. The dad, yeah. The intro has that with, with well, all But yeah, that's one thing I love about it, where like, as I said before, it's conflicting because like, you feel bad for them, and but they're also like, kind of assholes about it because they're not focusing really on the grieving, they're uh, trying to self-preserve. But at the same time, in a situation like that, they're completely right. Mm -hmm. because it, it, they're in a situation that none of us could fucking relate to with this like with the with the level of uh pressure the, and the pressure, responsibility yeah the, the the level of responsibility that they have over this business is like in, insanely high so and, like at the same time like I don't blame them for like coming because I, re I remember the I forgot the, the lady's name on the plane she was like I'm typing up like a uh, uh, statement, mm. you know, but just to have it, she just was like, to I just, just to case. be prepared because we're gonna be fucked, like, right now, like, yeah. at least let me do this, you yeah. know, yeah, so and, and no, and even like seeing like you know, all those side characters react to this death, it was also like really great. Like, we had like that moment where I don't remember who exactly it was, whether it was Frank or Carl, but one of them just immediately started pouring like a drink, like, like something alcohol was that was Carl. on the plate, yeah, yeah, it was Carl, and then and then one of them was just like, Oh, I guess we're off duty, I guess, I guess we're not, we're, we're not, we're not, no working hours, and you know, like the. Like, even, like, um, you know, Logan's girlfriend, like, Carrie, like, the way that she reacts after, where she was just, like, smiling, where she's like, oh, this is crazy, right, guys? And then they're all just like, what? The, what is going on with her? Like, like, like she was, was just, like, she, that was her. She was her, in shock. She was that like, was her sugar daddy, bro. Yeah, bro. She, <laughs> lost, she, she just lost, lost her sugar no, daddy. she lost, not, not a sugar, she lost the sugar daddy. Like, the, like, Logan Roy. This is, like, the, the, the I pinnacle think one of, of sugar One of the daddy. best, one of the, I think it was an episode two where she's on the, as the newscaster, bro. That shit is so funny. <laughs> and, then, and then he comes in, he's like, <laughs> like closes yeah, the yeah, laptop because yeah, he was watching it. Jerry closes the laptop. No, it was the other guy. The other guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's why he got mad at Jerry. That's why he. Told so him. is Jerry reinstated? <laughs> yeah, she never got fired. Like it's it's over, it's over since Logan died. She's gonna be in there. Like she just survives because and so that's why her she survives reaction. the snap exactly. And <laughs> it's so good because you know it's like when they're having the, when she's there with Roman, they have that awkward moment where they're sort of like looking at each other and Roman's just like yeah, I need I need to get the room and Jerry like she doesn't. Like comfort him, she just goes like because he was firing her for Logan. He didn't want to. He didn't I want to, but been. but like like it's still there between them, and so their you relationship's know what's the over. Funniest thing about that though, Jerry and a uh, Roman's relationship only happened because Kieran Culkin and the actress who plays Jerry have such good chemistry. chemistry yeah, they were like. Yo, I have an no. idea. <laughs> They're no. like, I have an idea, but dude, that's insane no. that their chemistry was so good. They wrote that relationship into the. No, if you watch, play, if you watch like the second episode, like of the of the first season when all this starts, like like Roman goes up to Jerry, just like, listen, <laughs> I'm not good at this whole corporate flirting thing, and then he just like starts talking, 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 and then at the end she says, "Who said that you're not good at flirting?" And it's just like it's so good, and, and the the way that their weird relationship develops from there, and it's so fun, it's so funny because. Logan's just like, why Why are you trying to send this to, to like, the, the dick make? Why are you trying to send this to, to Jerry? What are you, some sicko, some weirdo? Like, what, what, what's wrong with you? And meanwhile, Logan's, like, begging, like, all these, like, chicks. It's so crazy, dude. It's, it's such That's a why when show. Greg went up to him and started talking, like, yo, I, I kind of did something. And, like, and he's like, yo, my son. He's like, my fucking guy. <laughs> That's such um, a weird this predicament that Tom put him in. There. Yeah, Tom, Tom, Tom deliberately just puts Greg in like the worst situations. It's so funny. Like they have such like a hilarious bromance, but Greg has been willing to betray Tom multiple times, and Tom hasn't noticed. And so that's I think that's definitely gonna tie into like some of these later episodes. Um, but yeah, the breakup man. scene is my favorite Tom and Greg scene. Oh yeah, the Tom, the the water you bottle. can't do this to me. I won't let you do this to me. He's just like I want, I want like an open relationship. relationship. 
<laughs> no, because, wait, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, because I that was I watched season two a while. Yeah, it was a while back. I was a but while were they in? They were on good terms before that, right? They were on good terms, but also they, it was good. It was getting rough because Greg blackmailed Tom over. Yo, I have the documents. You know, like that was I haven't burned it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was season so, two. That was season? yeah, that was season two. And so and so and then he was just like, listen, I'm thinking about like spreading my wings, going into other companies. I want like a like a business. I think that's what like cut the that's whole exactly. Shit. No, but I, one of my favorite scenes too is at the at the end of season one where he tells like you, your fiance she's cheating on you. He's like, <laughs> shut up, Greg. shut up, Greg. Why would you say that to me, Greg? And he starts like hitting. Him. It's just such dude, a it's, it's such amazing, a funny dude. show, dude, and it's 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 amazing. I'm I'm so happy that it With exists. Such great character this. moments. I feel like I blew off the mic several times <laughs> in this episode, bro. Holy shit! Succession is worth it. Succession is worth blowing out. I mind. definitely, I gotta, I gotta. When I'm editing this, I gotta, I gotta <laughs> blow the specific moments where I yell. It's gonna be hell, bro. I have to go through the whole shit, uh, no. or I'm just gonna leave it and say fuck it. <laughs> Rest in peace to y'all ears, bro. But yeah, um, this season is gonna be insane. We're gonna continue to talk about it on future yeah, episodes. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be. I think, I think it's, I think we should wait until the season's done and then come back to it. I think that's for sure. I think that's what we're gonna do. So. Unless if there's like some other like crazy like yeah if like <laughs> like if some other characters die we're gonna have to cover it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. if they kill, like Logan is just like a pinnacle death I don't think they're gonna I don't think they're gonna kill else. anyone else but, but like who knows <laughs> at this rate look, look all I'm saying is that with HBO shows don't trust weddings bro because now like officially like on all these like wedding episodes something bad has happened and like in, like another wedding uh you know like Kendall had to deal with like the whole like kid crash and all that stuff and then now Logan dies during Connor's red wedding and then you know Game of Thrones all this stuff just don't trust weddings and hbo shows we gotta learn from this we gotta be prepared that's so crazy yeah dude, dude holy fuck so yeah that's man. crazy so yeah i mean the kids are the kids are still fucked the yeah kids are still fucked. It's, it's we'll see what happens for them but yeah that's a wrap y'all until whenever we shoot another episode <laughs> peace out